Iron Angel is a 1964 war film following the mission of some American soldiers during the Korean War. In this film, the terrain of war-torn Korea is portrayed by the Arizona desert. Directed by Ken Kennedy, Iron Angel stars Jim Davis, Don Barry, L.Q. Jones, and Margot Wood. Somewhere near the 38th parallel, a unit of U.S. Army soldiers have been tasked with flushing out an enemy ambush spot and clearing the way for an American convoy. The sergeant in charge lost several men on his last mission, which doesn't sit well with the men assigned to follow him this time. They make the trek, sharing stories about the women they fantasize about, before finding the enemy nest and fulfilling the mission, but with losses. On their way to rejoining the convoy, they find an abandoned ambulance, the Iron Angel, and a nurse abandoned alongside it. The soldiers also learn their job isn't quite done. Can they overcome their prejudices and work as one long enough to survive? Iron Angel was released to drive-ins by Crown International Pictures in April 1964, more than a decade after the DMZ was established, which ended America's most prominent participation in Korea's Civil War. There was very little that was clear-cut about the Korean War compared to World War II, and that was reflected in the movies of the time. The stories were more ambiguous. The value of the foot soldier and the virtue of combat itself was brought into question with less of the mythologizing that World War II movies typically presented, and Iron Angel followed that trend. As a war picture, Iron Angel had no epic battles. It makes no effort to build up what is already a small story. This movie is about the size of a soldier's reminiscence. In fact, there's 10 minutes of shore leave fantasies, soft core sequences starting around minute 7, minute 30, and minute 51 to get the movie to feature length. The longest day this movie is not. But the ground's eye view is one of the film's strengths. With nothing else to offer, the movie shines its light on the men themselves, the long quiet moments in between as they talk about the capriciousness of combat and the guilt that goes with surviving their lost comrades. There's even some attempt at social commentary, but this movie isn't going to do any heavy lifting here. Not when they're stag films to stop the story cold and give the audience something they couldn't watch on 1964 television. Seriously, these sequences feel like the movies the guys at the lodge would set up for Bachelor Night. Regarding its technical aspects, this is a very low-budget film. Plenty of folks get shot, even blown up by grenades, but there's no spectacle to the carnage. The guns and vehicles look authentic, at least. And Iron Angel might be one of the most amateur post-productions in this series. The edit that I watched from my Mill Creek collection is really rough, particularly when they whip pan to whatever fantasy they switch to. Iron Angel wasn't breaking new ground by any means, but I do think it was trying to share messages that had previously connected well with its intended audience. The men of the silent generation. Men who missed out on World War II, but heard the stories. Who still felt the call to fight, but found no romance in it, and found no glory at home like their older brothers did. It's a cynical view, but it's not really an anti-war film. So when Vietnam kicked into high gear by year's end, movies like Iron Angel would seem even more antiquated. Iron Angel was the second film from director Ken Kennedy. It was preceded by the 1962 film The Silent Witness, featuring George Kennedy. No idea if they're related, but it's the only film that the two worked on together. Ken followed up Iron Angel with a couple of adult content melodramas starring Jamie Carson, but by 1977, Kennedy went in a different direction, filming a biopic about a Jesuit missionary in the Old West. Still making movies for manly men, Kennedy's final directorial credit would be his contribution to the Grizzly Adams films. The legend continues. Several Hollywood cowboys signed up to join Iron Angel's squad. Don Barry was the original Red Rider in the long-running series of films, earning Barry his Red nickname for the rest of his career, from the big screens of the 1940s to The Little House on the Prairie. James Davis wore many hats throughout his career, but maybe his most impactful role would be his role as Jock Ewing, the patriarch of the Ewing clan in the iconic 80s TV soap, Dallas. L.Q. Jones was a reliable cowhand with many memorable roles, but his most iconic contribution might be behind the camera as the director of the cult apocalyptic western, A Boy and His Dog. So if you know somebody that can capably rant about the Vietnam era or political correctness, like they think MASH was sometimes funny when it wasn't trying to be preachy, they might feel a bit of nostalgia watching something like Iron Angel. It's manly without being macho, a bit smutty, even without actual nudity. Setting that aside, 
It's a short story about how men define themselves when they fall short of being the hero of the day.